What's up guys, how you doing? Thank you very much for checking out the video and welcome back to Colo Craft Bushcraft. This is your first time here. My name's Alex and this channel is all about my journey trying to learn and develop bushcraft skills. Uh, and with that in mind today, I'm out doing another bushcraft challenge. If you watched my last video, you would have seen that I attempted the one stick fire challenge uh, because my buddy Sean over at Northern Image Bushcraft and Survival kind of called me out and, uh, and challenged me to attempt it. So we did. Uh, and at the end of that video, I issued a counter challenge to him uh, that he had to do the one-handed fire challenge uh, and I did say in that video that I wasn't going to issue a challenge without having a go at it myself so that's what I'm out doing today um, again same as last time because this is a bushcraft challenge it's not a survival challenge uh, we've kept the rules relatively loose uh, essentially we are going to gather all of our, uh, gather, uh, gather all of our materials get a fire going and make a hot drink um, but we're only allowed to use one hand um, we've been nice and said we can use our dominant hands uh, the only kind of major thing is we can't use a lighter to get the fire going um, so I have a, a, a ferro rod, a fire steel that I'm going to use to try and get the fire going so that is what I'm going to attempt today uh, I hope you enjoy it, wish me luck As I'm sure you guys are aware we need three things to get a fire going we need tinder, we need kindling and we need fuel um, I am at my camp, I am going to use my fire pit, I'm going to clean that out in a minute to, to um, contain my fire. I just wanted to show you guys that yes, I know that there's a wood store here and I know that it, uh, there is semi-processed bits of wood in here. I'm not going to use any of that uh, and I am going to go and get fresh materials. Um, to show you guys that I'm not cheating, I'm going to put my little action camera on a chest mount uh, and walk around with that on. So if I look a bit silly, um, well, you'll just have to bear with me, but it, uh, it's just to prove that I'm not cheating and I am doing everything with just one hand. I am right-handed. So I'm going to use my right hand. Um, the only time that I might use two hands is if I have to move the big camera um, because, well, it, you know, it's, it's a relatively nice camera and I don't want to break it. Um, but other than that, I will do my utmost to prove I'm just using one hand all the time. So in terms of uh, kindling and fuel, all of that I'm going to source from the woods just behind my camp here. In terms of tinder, as I said before, because this is a bushcraft challenge and not a survival challenge, um, I am thinking about using cotton wool. If I can find any birch bark um, in the woods here, I will use that instead, but there isn't a huge amount of birch around here, so it may be that I, uh, I have to use cotton wool. But again, all of the processing of that, the setting it up uh, and the getting it alight, um, I can only use one hand for. So, let's get to it. Just as an FYI, I am going to use two hands to put the camera mount on myself, um, but I will seal the bag up again, so anything that else that I have to get out of here, I will only be able to use one hand. The question is, where is the camera? Oh yeah, looking cool. Okay, so from now on, one hand, right hand, left hand goes behind my back. Oh yeah, that tasted good. <laughs> what I am gonna do, um, because, as you can probably see, uh, everything around here at the moment is completely and utterly soaked. So I'm going to put my get off me. I'm going to put my sit pad just here, uh, so that once I've gathered materials, I can rest them on here uh, and keep them off the uh, off the wet ground.
All right, so I mentioned that for tinder we're going to try and use cotton wool unless I can find some birch. Um, in terms of the first kind of bit of, of fuel going onto the fire, if you, if you like, that kindling, what I'm looking for is um, really thin twigs that are currently on the trees that just snap off really easily because it means they're dead. So ideally I want kind of matchstick thin and I need a whole big pile of them. Um, so it may, be, it may take me a few trips. Um, you know, going back to camp and laying them down and coming back, but uh, but yeah. So what we're kind of looking for is stuff like that. So now that actually is probably a bit green. That hasn't snapped as cleanly as I would like it. So I need to find some other uh, other deader, deader, more dead trees, more dead sticks. So let's go hunting. Hopefully this is in shot. So you see how nice and easily this stuff is breaking. This is exactly what I want. What I might try and do is put some of these in my pocket. So stuff like this that's hanging is going to be really useful later on. That's a bit big for what I want at the moment, um, so, but we'll come back for that. Do with bigger pockets. <clears throat> Okay, hopefully I'm in the shop, can't really tell. Um, but I've got a pocket full of stuff now, so I'm gonna take this back to camp, put it down, and then come and get some more in a sec. Just dumping that stuff for now, I'll come back and process it in just a sec. branch just here so if we can get this out in one piece I can then process it back like a camp which would be really helpful. I wonder if I can just get that bit off, keep all of that because that's got some whoa, nice bits on it. I think this is hawthorn because it's stabbing me a bit. Come on, get in there. a good bit. Take that back to camp. All right, I'm not sure, but I think we may have probably enough little bits to be getting on with, and I'm going to try and scavenge some slightly bigger pieces. Pieces like this in here that have fallen from a tree higher up, but have landed straight are really good. So now they're obviously dead because they've fallen, uh, but because they're straight, hopefully there isn't a huge amount of moisture in them. They will be on the end of this because it's in the ground, but this is the kind of thing that we're now looking for. So let's go find some more. Oh, there's a good bit. Come here. Let's get hit in the face. Nice. Oh, there's a hanging bit as well. Nice. Ooh, a bit awkward. All right. Let's take these back and then come back for a bit more.
All right, so we've collected a fairly decent amount here. So now what I need to do is process them up into the various stages, um, as in size order. So like the bigger ones that you can see, obviously they're gonna go on later on as part of the fuel, um, but there's no way I can put it on just like that. So now I need to process it down. Any of these little sticks here, these little twigs that you can see poking up, um, I want to try and take uh, off so I can put them in as part of the uh, part of the prep as well. So it's probably easy to start with the bigger ones, isn't it? I'm going to try, as I said earlier, try and keep everything off the ground as far as I can, uh, just because it is wet. The bigger ones I'm less concerned about. It's the little stuff that I need to make sure is, is kept nice and dry. So uh, let's start with the big one. Right, you just go over there for a second. Oh, come on. There we go. Now they are really mossy and damp. The wood on the inside is okay. Uh, as I said before, I want to avoid using processing tools, so what I'll probably do is wait to put them on until the fire is kind of really going. That way it shouldn't be too much of an issue. Okay, now I know that that was quite long <laughs> uh, with the camera not moving in just one shot, so uh, note to self, remember to fast forward this bit. All right, so as you can see, I've finished my prep. Uh, I've got the stuff that's gonna go on first here, second kind of there, and then the slightly bigger bits for fuel as well. Um, so the next thing to do is, well, take this off because I don't think I need it anymore. Oh. Take that off. As I said before, I think a couple of times now, uh, I'm going to use cotton wool, uh, but to make life a little bit easier, I'm also going to put the cotton wool in some uh, Vaseline. This is a really good trick if you're new to this kind of stuff. Um, there we go. Uh, it works really, really well as a, uh, as a fire lighting um, tinder when combined with cotton wool. So let's get that out. Now, this may be cheating. I don't know. I think this is a a perfectly legit bushcraft method, so I'm going to use it. So my cotton wool is in my little pouch here, which hopefully I can open one-handed. Just about, there we go. I do also have some other little fire lighting things in here as well, um, like some matches and stuff like that, but as you can see I've just got some cotton wool balls that I'm going to try and fluff up a bit. Don't need the char cloth, don't need a match. So, the more fibrous this is, the better. And as I have been taught a few times, you should never skimp on the amount that you use. So I'm gonna use quite a bit, which will of course, obviously, well, should <laughs> help me um, in terms of getting the fire going. Now, doing this one-handed, it's gonna be messy. How am, I gonna, how am I gonna pinch that? Maybe I'll just do this. Oh, and hope for the best kind of work that in there. It's not really spreading particularly well and it's actually clumping my wool together. But I will endeavour. I will endeavour. Okay, let's hope. Let's get another little bit, just shove that in there. Oh, <laughs> oh this is so messy. Right. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, this is gonna be my main kind of tinder source. Um, I'm gonna put this in the, in the middle of my um, uh, fire base, 
I'm going to build the or put some of the smaller matchstick sized bits of wood over it in kind of a V shape and I'm actually going to kind of create a fuse of cotton wool that I'm going to light, he says confidently. So let's put this down because this is now very sticky. Now I want smaller bits from my pile here. Get off. I'm just going to lay, oh this is really difficult just with one hand, over the top. Now I'm going to get a second bunch and put them, let's make sure I've got the thinnest bits that I can find, which are now all over the place. Figuring out how to do a fire steel one-handed. If you watched my last video, you would have seen that I didn't get particularly great sparks from my fire steel using the edge of my um, knife. So this time I have a striker instead, which should, in theory, make life easier. However, how am I going to do this? So when I watched um, Mike from TA Outdoors do this. What he kind of did was rest his fire steel on his kind of on his boot like that, and then strike that away, which he did it at the side like that. Okay, which does work if it's a little bit. That could work. That could work. I'm wondering if to get a better angle, maybe if I use like a stick, rest that on the stick and then put my foot over the top of the stick and the top of the fire steel to keep it in place. What do you think? Right, now, just need a small stick. Aha! So if I do that, and then pop that there, go away leaf. That maybe, and then put my foot on it. I mean, it's going to make my fire steel all kinds of dirty, but like that maybe, and then okay, maybe that works. Well, it does mean that at the end of my fire steel is now covered in mud, but when it's in there, hopefully that won't make any difference. Okay, um... <laughs> let's give it a whirl. There we go, let's give this a whirl. Well, that bit was relatively painless. Now all we have to do is hope that the kindling is dry enough and that it'll actually take. Relatively promising. I'm going to put my file of steel and this stuff away. sticks on I think. No 
one stick in it, Joe. Ah, whoo! Right, while we let that build up, we need to get my pot. Oh, too much camera gear, come on. Where's my pot? There's my pot. Pot. And lid. Lid. And I'll tell you what, I better put that away. Same as last time, don't need a huge amount. This is only for me. Now, let's get this hanging. Oh, the inside of that is not clean. Oh well. So, get this going. I'm going to use my pot hook. Come on. He knew this would be the most difficult bit. There we go. Get that in the middle. Pop her on the cord here. Oh, hopefully. And then all I need to do is carefully move this over the fire quickly enough so that I don't burn myself and without dropping it. I think for now, the only thing to do is sit back and play the waiting game. Nice, one hand, whoop! Oh yeah, you guys see that, hopefully? Whoops, only one hand. We boiling! Right. Time to get my brew going. Let's take this off. Oh, don't spill it now. Oh, you know what, just take the stick off, you moron. There we go. Come on, coffee. There you are. Oh, come on. Let me fail at the final hurdle. That would have been really upsetting. Go over there. Do a oh, bit of mud there. Never mind this back on. I have to stop using my teeth to do that. Alrighty. Yep, the obligatory forest is in there. Drink, one hand, boom. Well, cheers, folks. Mm. Oh, good. Am I allowed my hand back now? Now that I've had my first sip, does that count? Do I have to drink the whole thing with one hand? I'm going to take my left hand back <laughs> and say I've completed completed the challenge. Um, well, I have to say, uh, that was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed that. I think I found that a bit more challenging than the one stick fire. Um, you know, gathering everything, sourcing it, collecting it, processing it, uh, and getting the fire going with just one hand was um, was tricky, but uh, but I thoroughly enjoyed doing it. Um, I know I need, I know I use the cotton wool uh, and the Vaseline instead of trying to process the wood just with one hand, but you know I'm new to all of this stuff. You know that's kind of the whole premise of this channel is that I'm new to newish to bushcraft and I'm learning these skills. And and you know I think at the moment using man-made tinders is is a perfectly legit way of, of getting a fire going. So I'm still going to count it. But yeah, had a lot of fun. Um, if you guys know of any other little fun bushcraft challenges that I can do, um, you know, please let me know in the comments. I am looking for realistic things. So if you were to say something like go out into the Arctic tundra with nothing but a pair of shorts and some boots and survive for as long as possible, 
Uh, I'm going to be honest with you, I'm not going to do it. I can tell you how long it's survived, about four seconds. Um, but if you have any kind of legit fun, uh, relatively easy beginner bushcraft challenges um, for me, you know, do put them in the comments below uh, and I will certainly have a go at them. Um, but thank you very much for watching guys, I really hope you enjoyed it. Um, I'm going to try and find more of these challenges um, uh, and do them. Next up I'm going to have a go at the bow drill. I know I keep saying I'm going to do the, oh I'm going to do the bow drill, I'm going to do the bow drill. Uh, but I legit am actually going to do it. Um, so that will be fun, that should be next time out. Um, probably next time out anyway. And my next video might be an overnighter, I'm not sure. Or oh, maybe the one after that, we'll see. Either way, the next couple of videos I will be doing the bow drill, trying to get an ember going. Uh, and trying to see if I can, um, if I can find, if I can find a decent tinder bundle, might bring some uh, straw or hay with me or something like that. If I can get a tinder bundle going, see if I can actually um, get an ember, get it into a tinder blower, a tinder bundle, and blow it into life. So that should be fun. Anyway, I'm rambling. Thank you very, very much for watching, guys. Uh, I really hope you enjoyed it. As always, if you're new, make sure you hit subscribe, hit the bell to stay notified of when I put a new video out. And I shall see you guys very, very soon. Cheers. Take care. All the best. One-handed fire challenge complete!